Yeah. Legends speak of old Ben Curtis, who could set up an EC2 server faster than you could blink an eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he went away as fast as an EC2 server. <laughs> <laughs> you are in a maze of twisty little passages, all alike. Time to start a fire, crack open a can of tab, and settle in for Founder Quest. It all started with Remus and Romulus. Am I right, Ben? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Remus and Romulus. Those were the the names of our like first two servers. Database. Our, our first database servers, not our first, our first database servers. servers. Yeah. I'm sorry. There was a, was it Snickers? Was the f- yes. Yeah, Snickers, Snickers was, was, was the, the first. first. Yeah, so back in the day when we actually named our servers, we named them after candy bars. So first came Snickers, then came Remus and Romulus. And would you say that like today, Honey Badger is kind of in the uh, the late, the decline of the Empire stage? <laughs> I, I hope not, no. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we didn't like predestine ourselves right. <laughs> with, our, with our server naming. We're still, so, we're still so in the referencing... vigorous days of the Republic. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we're referencing the Roman Empire, right? So and it's like Remus and Romulus were like, they were, you just said that they were like the sort of like second service that we set up. And before that was Snickers. So I just wanted to say that like, you're implying that in the foundation of like the Roman Republic before there was Remus and Romulus, like the official story, there, there was, was somebody named Snickers who was, who really, there was, the, there was a Snickers. Yeah. Good old Snickers. <laughs> Snickers was the God that no one talks about. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Snickers was the, the name of the, uh, the wolf that raised Remus and Romulus, right? Like, there you right. Go. Okay. Yeah. That's a good name yeah. for a pet. I like it. Snickers yeah. the wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. I love that so much. Oh my gosh. Now we need some. I'm, uh, I am totally going to name my next dog Snickers, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a awesome. great name. Oh, I missed that so server. To- oh. Yeah, that was a good server. <laughs> yeah. Good old days. So welcome to a special Valentine's Day episode of Founder Quest, yeah. where we talk about love. We take reader questions on, you know, romance and like how to, I'm just kidding. Um, so we're going to be talking about, so last episode we talked about briefly towards the end, we talked about how we're going to be doing the Honey Badger. What, what's the official branding? Like, what are we officially calling it? The so indie... I think we're calling it the Honey Badger Indie Lounge. I like that. You know what would be even better than that? Tell me. The Honey Badger Indie Ultra Lounge. <laughs> Ooh, I like With that. sprinkles. I like, yeah. Yeah. With yeah. Sprinkles. Just get some like overstuffed furniture in there. I, I don't know. We I've should, never been we to should give out lounge. Snickers. We should give out Snickers bars. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, you in should. A, and have that party in pack honor of, of Snickers our, in a bowl. Uh, yeah. In honor of our server. Our first server. Yeah. yeah. That's a great idea. Actually, you know, I've been legit hungry at conferences. So like, I feel like we get a lot of traction if we just had like a, a fruit bowl, just like <laughs> bananas, just like yeah. free bananas. Yeah, I think uh, good idea. we're, we're going to have something food related yeah, so there. I we're, we're working on getting a uh, popcorn cart, actually. To show oh, really? Up. Yes. That's so cool. Yeah, because oh, he doesn't so love cool. popcorn. It's good to snack on. Yeah. So maybe we should explain a little bit about what the heck we're talking about. Well, first of all, we're talking about RailsConf. RailsConf yes. is going to be when, like in May? Um, May? Yeah, I think it's in early. It's yeah. in May. It's in Portland. It's Portland like is, you know, the Pacific Northwest. We're in the Pacific Northwest. So we're like, okay, we've got to really represent. Because if it was across the country, I mean, let's be honest, we just couldn't be bothered. But also, we have, this is part of our history, like our origin story. You know, we kind of launched at RailsConf PDX. Or was, was it RubyConf right. or was it RailsConf? It was RailsConf. It was RailsConf. Yeah. yeah, last time RailsConf was here, I forget what year that was. It was, uh, I know it wasn't like 2012, but it was like a couple years after that, within that time span, I think. We went to RailsConf and we, uh, we couldn't afford to sponsor because RailsConf is a pretty hefty sponsorship price usually. Josh, Josh, we couldn't afford tickets. I mean, we, yeah, you're right. We couldn't afford tickets, we, right? <laughs> we didn't even get to go inside. We just sort of hung out we, in the hallway. We did the hallway. Yeah, the hallway track. We basically oh bombed the hallway track and like put stickers on tables and things. Yeah, right. that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, um, and I, that was one of the first times I've actually spent much time in Portland. So I totally forgot that we actually couldn't even afford tickets. <laughs> Yeah, I remember it's like a, sitting outside, like times. in the hallway, yeah. like doing some client work for somebody. And because, you know, I was still like freelancing part time. 
Yeah. And just sort of doing that and felt like such a, such a rebel. I'm trying to remember that. I don't think, was that before was I? I don't know. Because if so, that was like my, I had never been to a conference before. That would have been my no, first conference. No, was always, that was, was always first because we met first. at Wazawa, right? Oh, that's right. I guess, yeah, I guess you're right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'd been to like one conference before. Yeah. So mm. RailsConf is back in Portland. And RailsConf is back. And this you know time, another this cool time little, we can afford tickets. <laughs> you know, another cool little circling of the, the, the circle. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> looping back of the, the snake that eats its own tail. <laughs> Portland has this awesome video game and pinball bar space called, what is it called? Ground um, Control. Ground Control. It's amazing. And uh, that's where I first learned to enjoy pinball. And I was actually on the night that I'm talking about. So uh, GitHub basically rented out Ground Control and uh, opened it up to RailsConf people. And I, you know, looked enough like a RailsConf person that I sort of snuck in and, you know, played a bunch of pinball for free on GitHub's tab. And this time, though, this time we're going to be actually renting out ground control ourselves, right? For a, yeah, for a little party on, I think it's on yeah, the first a night. Shindig. The first night of RailsConf, yeah. Yeah, we're, so we're also doing that. Uh, so we're doing two things. We're doing the Indie Lounge and we're doing a party. That's going to be really fun because the party is going to be free to play. Like all the retro arcade games will be free to play. And except, we're going except for Galaga. Galaga will not be available because uh, I'll be playing it all night long. <laughs> ben has oh Galaga reserved. <laughs> I've got dibs. VIP Galaga. I guess I better get on that. Like I better go like stick out my uh yeah. my machines early. <laughs> we should put that so we're gonna we're gonna do a sign up for this. We're gonna send out mm. invites and allow people to register because we don't have like a capacity for the entire Rails conf population to go to the to the event. So we're gonna have to limit it. But we should put that on the uh, the registration form, like yeah, uh, your name, your favorite video game, so that we can like you know warn people. Oh, there's a lot of demand for. Oh yeah, that would be cool. Pole position. I don't know. You better you and, better get there uh, early. Get, I don't want to get between the nerds and their games. Like that just seems <laughs> yeah. like a bad a bad place to be if we're trying to to engender goodwill. <laughs> I just say let them fight it out. I mean, it's Lord of the Flies out there. We all know that. That's true. <laughs> you have to play Mortal Kombat to find out who gets to play the game they want to play. Yeah. yeah. So what was our thinking behind doing the the lounge bet, the indie um, lounge or ultra lounge, as I'm calling it, is With like, that's a little bit of a different deal than you usually see at conferences. Like most time, most of the time you go to a conference and it's just kind of like a company. They've got uh, reps there. They've got like maybe demos. Maybe they're giving out little koozies or something with their logos on it or maybe little flashlights or some other, you know, mm -hmm. stuff that will get lost in your backpack and you'll never see again. And how are we trying to like change that up? So there's always been a problem. Like we've always had a problem at RailsConf. Like I said, like we back when like RailsConf was in Portland and we couldn't, we could, couldn't even afford tickets, much less sponsorship. Even then, like, you know, in the years after that, as a small bootstrap company, even though we, st we started attending and stuff, we still couldn't afford some of the sponsorship tiers at the larger conferences that you know a lot of the larger companies are doing so we'd have to kind of improvise or come up with our own own things but i always thought it would be cool if there were a way to involve some of the smaller businesses and even maybe like solo or individual developers so that they can come and have like you know semi-official place to hang out and talk to people and that sort of thing and um and so that's where this lounge idea kind of came in the idea is basically, um, you know, we're kind of like the headlining sponsor, but we're going to be involving some of the other small businesses in the uh, the Rails community, and then hopefully, like, it'll kind of be like a meeting place for all of the, I guess, indie creators in the community or whatever you want to call them, uh, you know, like the microconf crowd, even. Yeah, and just to warn you, this isn't like um, an ambush. Like, we're not trying to just get these people in a corral so we can just like have our salespeople swar swarm on them because we don't really have yeah, salespeople. We don't have we're sales just people. legit trying to. We're just legitimately trying to sort of foster community amongst people like us who are sort of building things and sort of out there trying to do stuff at a scale that's not sort of this big corporation. Yeah, and that, that's the yeah that well that's the other thing. Like, we don't. It's not really our style to go set up like a demo booth and have like salespeople like try to sell sell developers walking by on Honey Badger like right there in your face. We kind of just like to 
chill. So this is a place to chill and it lets us put our name on, you know, put our name on it and, uh, and give somewhere like the people can come talk to us or whatever. And we, we can do other cool things around this lounge. Like this lounge idea is like, it's like a meeting point. You know, we can, we can build things around it that, uh, that I think are pretty interesting as opposed to the, like the, like Ben was talking about, like you know, handing out keychains or something, <laughs> which is extremely lame in my so opinion. So what do you mean? What, what sort of things could we build around it? I mean, um, we're not going to hold you to this because it's all like we have it, the lounge booked, but we don't have every single detail worked out. Yes, so, so anything that we say is, is sort of tentative, I think beyond this point. Well, yeah. So I don't have, I mean, I don't have any like super crazy ideas really. But like the party, for instance, you know, we're, we're doing this also that we're doing this like party that we're hopefully going to, you know, we might involve that in this a little bit. I think some of, we might um, offer some of our, uh, we don't have like official co-sponsors yet. We'll be announcing that at some point. But the idea is that we're, we're going to make like, I think we're going to have like some sort of like mini, kind of like a prospectus where different people can be like participate at different levels. That makes sense. And I'm, I'm not quite sure what all those levels will be yet, but it'll, you know, it'll be like you can get your logo on the, um, on the banner for the lounge, for instance, and, and we'll promote you as a part of our promotion to our customers as we kind of get this thing uh, out there to people. So I've got to ask you a tough question, Josh. Uh oh. Does this count as multi level marketing? I think we could go there. <laughs> if you recruit, you know, we recruit you and then you recruit several of your friends to join you at the lounge and then they can recruit their friends. Like if you buy a spot in the lounge, do you get to put up your own little tiny banner with pe- tiny little so logos tiny, on it? So a tiny banner. Yeah, okay. Yes. I see that. Yeah. I see where you're going. So we could have like sub prospectus and then the sub sub prospectus that, you know, we, prospectuses, everyone gets their own prospectus that they can then sell to their, their people. But unlike a multi-level marketing thing, it's like not actually a scam and everybody gets to have a good time. So yeah, I like it. I like this whole direction because with marketing stuff like this, it's really hard to tell, like it's really hard to draw a straight line between some effort like this and a sign up, you know, Mm -hmm. like occasionally some people will come by and be like, Oh, I signed up because I saw you at this place. But for the most part, you don't really know. Like one thing I really like, about our marketing efforts lately is that they're all things that I just think are good. Yeah. You know, they're just good to do in the world. And it's, I'm just happy that we're doing them, you know, and obviously like, I hope that we get good ROI on it. And if it, we somehow magically learned that we didn't, we'd probably have to stop it. But in the meantime, I'm just sort of glad we're doing it. It makes yeah. me happy to well, sort of be in this community like this. I don't know, Star, you can just buy things, you know, you can buy things for yourself and not everything has to have an ROI. Like we could just buy ourselves a RailsConf lounge if we just wanted one for us. Like just for us? Just for us. Like this could, you know, we don't, we could just like, we don't even have to let anyone in. Like this could just be, you know, this could be a place for Honey Badger people to hang out. Oh my gosh. Um, It doesn't have to like have a return on investment necessarily. Can we get like a scary bouncer and put them outside the door <laughs> with like a little honey, velvet like rope? Honey badgers only. <laughs> yeah. And maybe the door open so people can look in. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're not like hiring tons of people. Like we actually are hiring one person right now, but a lot of companies that go and sponsor conferences, they're doing it because they're hiring. We do happen to be a developer tool. So like any kind of goodwill that we can build with other developers, obviously is good for us long term. And I think that's been our approach to conference sponsorships is that, you know, we're kind of just out there building goodwill with developers. We've never had a really good way to tie this sort of thing to like the bottom line. And I think that's fine. Like, I think it's cool to do stuff just because you want to do it or, you know, it's, it's fun. Yeah. And also we're kind of like writing a perceived sort of injustice in the world a little bit because I mean, I remember when, like back in, when was it? 2015 or something, 2014, where there were just like Ruby conferences every, like every two weeks, there was a Ruby conference somewhere in the country. And we sponsored like pretty much all of them, except for RailsConf, because RailsConf basically would, it would have been like our budget could have gone to all of the Ruby conferences in the country or RailsConf, you know? Yeah, it's like all of them combined. It would have cost the same. Yeah, all of them combined or RailsConf. Um, which I understand why they do that. Like it's a big conference, it's like the biggest one. It's just uh, high in demand. Mm-hmm. 
I remember back back in those days, you know, when we were talking about that sort of thing, and I remember saying like, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if someday we could have that booth that we actually had the money to be able to do that? And and here we are. We do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that awesome? Like it dreams, is awesome. dreams come true. Dreams come true. And that happened to you. Yeah, that's if that's why you're young at heart. <laughs> That's, that's why I like to say that we're living the bootstrapper's dream, right? Because like, you know, first it was, let's get uh, enough money so that we can actually stop doing freelancing. And we, we got there, you know, and then it was, oh, let's, let's get to a point where we can do this kind of fun stuff. And we got there. And it's, it's great. I love it. I love this life. So yeah. can anybody tell me who came up with this idea of the lounge? It's got to be Josh's idea. It sounds like a Josh idea to me. It was, I mean, it was the, a Josh you're idea. Finley, you're a genius, Josh. <laughs> You're a freaking genius. And I'm so glad you did this because like, honestly, like, let's be honest, like if we would have gotten a normal booth and done the normal booth thing, like I would have shown up, I would have like done my part manning it and smiled at people. But honestly, I would have been just terrible at that. Like that is just does not play to my skills. That's the other part of this lounge is that none of us wanted to actually like have to stand at a booth. <laughs> so like no one in the company wanted to like man a booth. <laughs> so yeah. we're like, what, yeah. what can we do that doesn't involve like tying us to a, you know, a place for the entire conference? Cause we like to move around and talk to people and, you know, also go to the, the talks and things. So, yeah. So we should think of the things that always, uh, that we find annoying about conferences or like that we would really appreciate when we go to like a big conference like RailsConf and then try and provide those in the booth to some degree. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, wouldn't that be nice? Like the bananas, free toothbrushes. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we're going to, I think we're going to do... Um, like lots of places to sit quietly. I haven't confirmed the details on this yet, but the idea is that we're going to have a place for people to like bring some of their like swag and stuff. If you've, if you know, you've got your own product or, or business or something, um, we're hoping to have a place to uh, at least like, you know, hand out some stickers or small, small items. Probably not, you know, we're not going to have like, a bunch of different like t-shirt tables or something. And actually, they did this at, at RubyConf and they've done it some of the past years. But the rule is kind of that if you're unofficial, like if you're not a sponsor, but if you are a small company or something um, or developer and have your own thing, like you're, you can put your stickers on the tables that aren't being used around the venue, for instance. Um, and everyone does that. So the, like my thought was like this kind of gives a way to legitimize that a little bit more too. So we're going to be hopefully encouraging people to bring their, you know, stickers and small items like that to hand out. And who knows, we might even do a podcast interview on the show floor. Right? We might uh, talk might. to some of our indie developers. Oh, that's right. Small yeah, biz we talked friends. about doing that. That would be yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. Meet, yeah meet so, the uh, yeah, that'd be yeah, cool. If if anybody, I just, I should say at this point, like if anybody is interested in co-sponsoring or I don't know, being interviewed or whatever, like all this is kind of up in the air, but yeah. you're always welcome to contact us, like slide into our DMs at, at uh, Twitter or Founder Quest or email us at, you know, yeah. wherever. If you got ideas, support. like ideas for things you'd like to see at the lounge, we're yeah, always ideas open. Ideas at things you'd like to see at the lounge at honeybadger.io. <laughs> any, any particular snacks you'd like to have? Snacks, yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. Popcorn toppings. We we have confirmed though that there there will be power. Oh, <laughs> so, power is a big so one. We, yeah, yes, we are yeah. going to have places to plug various kinds of things in. So if you want to, you know, rest yeah, your feet a while good. and rest your battery a while, you can come and hang out with the honey badgers and yeah, charge oh, up. That's good. You, uh, here's some here's some stories. There, of good will, old days. there will not there will will not be Tesla parking. <laughs> so no Tesla parking. Leave your uh, you leave it's your fine. Model Threes at home. We're not charge. We're only charging laptops, and phones. But how homebrew is this going to be? Should I be bring like my NES or something, and like a CRT? I think that yeah, that would be cool. You might you might run to some problems with the with the <laughs> venue. They get pretty oh, they strict like about what kind of equipment you can have there. Oh, they don't like it if you bring your own equipment. Not at all. Mm -mm. Huh? Like oh, you want a power core with that power? Oh, that that's going to be an extra charge. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. So can we rent an NES from the, from the venue? Do you think? Hmm. That's an interesting idea. I mean, it is Portland. Portland's pretty hip True. that way. What? Oh, oh, I know. I know. We need to rent a Galaga upright <laughs> video game. We could, yes. Have a, um, that would be awesome. An arcade cabinet. Yes. At the booth. Yes. To promote our, 
We got we have to get Ben on that right away. Off the books party. <laughs> we got the thing I don't that. like about arcade cabinets is you've got to like stand up. Well, yeah, I do most of my gaming like reclined. <laughs> Make some kind of. That's why I never get into PC gaming. Like, let's be honest. I don't want to sit at my desk and play a game. Like, I, like I'm laying on like like if I'm playing a game, I'm I'm laying down on my living room floor. Okay, so here's something completely random. Speaking of reclining, okay. I walked into my office this morning, and and as you know, I my office is upstairs from a wine tasting room, a retail little place establishment, and of course they're not here at the time of the morning that I get here. But so I'm walking in. Unlock the door, you know, disarm the alarm, and I'm looking around, and they have this little display of, you know, little wine paraphernalia things you can buy, you know, like, I don't know, whistling wine stoppers or whatever. And uh, they have these socks, a pair of socks, and the socks, mm-hmm. <laughs> one sock says, if you can read this, and the other sock says, bring me some wine. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're reclining, and you got your socks on, your feet are out, and you're like, hey, Oh, I see. Okay, read so this, it's bring me some they're wine. like reclining socks. Exactly. Nice. So there you go. While you're playing your video game, Star, you can recline and you can be like, hey, hook me up here. There we go. <laughs> you know, the main thing I'm getting from all this is like wine like ain't as fancy as it used to be. <laughs> right. It's not. That's, that's the you, impression I get. When you yeah, have yeah. special socks. <laughs> 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 So oh we will not be serving wine at the lounge. Sorry. Oh, yeah. It's just a, like, was... Jenny, get me my wine socks. <laughs> I'm going to drink some wine. If we do, it'll be out of a plastic bag. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll just, I'll get my big like 20 inch professional sort of like CRT video monitor and my NES and I'll put them in a big black plastic trash bag mm-hmm. and I'll just wheel them in. Just like, oh, just taking out the trash and then like, I'll just open up the little front and there it'll be. You just have to be a rebel, don't you, Star? Like I do, yeah. Maybe we should do special giveaways at the lounge. Maybe if you bring us a box of voodoo donuts, then we'll give you a month free of Honey Badger. Hmm. Oh. So we're just going to like do promotions to get stuff now. <laughs> so, so no one's, no one's invited. You can bring us, <laughs> you can bring us like donuts and leave them at the door and, and we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll hook you up with a free account. I like this. I like this, this whole like uh, corruption vibe. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. Like I could get on this gravy train. You know, I think we've been like upright citizen for too long. It's time to cash in yeah. boys. Honey Badger is going uh, criminal. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're pivoting, Josh. That's what that's called. <laughs> when you do that, that's called pivoting. When you go criminal. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's like in the- For, Fortunately, <laughs> we have a business model already that works. So we don't have to pivot. Yeah, yeah, we're not really crime. criminal. Oh. We're not really, okay. <laughs> okay. I know. I know you see all the work you've been doing in like the PCI compliance or whatever. What? I don't know. SOC compliance, whatever compliance. Uh, just like crashing down around you, uh-huh. like, uh, yeah, like Godzilla, you know, or Rampage, <laughs> uh, my favorite video game from the, the 80s. That's an awesome game. Yes. Josh, what, what is the game you're going to be playing all night at Ground Control? Maybe Pinball. Pinball was pretty fun. Yeah, me too, honestly. Oh, my big insight, my big Pinball pro tip is that you don't press both, both flippers at the same time. <laughs> one, that one was a habit other. left over from like childhood. Because it's like it's both of them. You're guaranteed to get to have one of them hit it, but actually yeah. it's a trap. It does. It's guaranteed to like not work yeah, as well. It doesn't work. Do we have any more like stuff we should say like on topic? Come check out the lounge. Come check out the lounge. Crickets. Um, Crickets, yeah. Ben, I probably will be playing now that I've had a little chance to think about it. I'll probably be playing Street Fighter or a Street Fighter like game. Um, I do like yeah, the fighters. Yeah. You do seem like a Street Fighter kind yeah. of. Kind yeah, of um, I actually, I'm a Mortal. Com- I like Mortal Kombat better, but yeah, yeah, yeah. no doubt. <laughs> I challenge, I challenge you to it. I a like Street the. Fighter you gotta have, you gotta have the mortality, <laughs> right? <laughs> Finish him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be fun. It'll be a blast. If you want to come hang out, sit on the couch with us for a while. It's gonna be yeah. Great. Details forthcoming on the uh, like bringing swag and whatnot. So the other thing that's been going on is that we've been interviewing and hiring or not hiring we've been interviewing and working on the hiring sort of process for this new position of ours ben has done like a ton of interviews and josh and i have talked to two people who have like i guess made it past ben's rigorous like dragnet of 
competency. Ben's HR, Honey Badger HR, and I'm kind of well. I guess we've we've joked that stars like hype. Uh, you know, they're like they're the hype man or whatever. Hype man. Yeah. So, but I, I think I feel like in this instance, I've been the hype man to your HR, like because I've been basically just trying to dump job candidates on you. And now, like, we're up to how many? Like, like forty three, fifty. Yeah. It was forty three yesterday. 50? So we got like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so fifty fifty people have applied to our job <laughs> so far. Yeah, yeah. Not not bad. Yeah. That's crazy. We we it started out slow. I thought it was going to be a little bit like sparse, but no. Yeah, it did yeah. start kind of slow, but yeah, Josh's hype man abilities when he, <laughs> when he sent out that newsletter, <laughs> they got a Sending lot. Sending out people. emails. Like he, the podcast also helped. Like we have we've had a number helped, of people yeah. come you know through the podcast. So if you're listening, thank you for applying. Is this the the email you wrote as part of the um, leveling up? Yeah, um, mailing the, list. The F that. So what's, what's leveling up and what's email? Leveling up is our weekly newsletter or i guess it's every other weekly but it's uh like articles for how to level up your career as a web developer and um the email we don't really do expletives on on founder quest do we but it's titled f that money and there's a lot of cursing in it and it's basically about how silicon valley culture sucks and we're not in this to like make a shit ton of money Basically, we would rather have like a shit ton of freedom than a shit ton of money. So I just want to point this out because it, it may not like come through over the audio as well as it does like when you're reading it. But the F that money is a corruption of F U money, F-U right? Because like yes. VCs and stuff are always going on about like you want to get F U money where you yeah. can just like, I don't know if you if your neighbor is bothering you, you just like buy their house from the property management company and kick them out yeah, on the street. Right. Homeless. That's like F you money. <laughs> Raise the rent on them until they have to break their lease. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I know is the American dream for a lot of people. I'm not denigrating that at all whatsoever. We all have got to have our, our own goals in life. But Josh <laughs> but is that is not ours. that money. Yeah, so yeah, F that, F that money. It's, a, it's kind of a contrast where you're not like trying to like screw over other people, but... You know, you, you basically don't have to do, I think that like the real, the real idea behind it was that a lot of people that like have that mentality of like, I want to make that kind of money someday and have that kind of power. They like spend their whole careers, like, you know, working crazy hours and and trying to get ahead and doing the whole, um, you know, whatever it is, VC model. Yeah. Um, and in the end, like, let's just say it, most of them do don't you get it. Most no, yeah, don't you succeed. probably don't get it no, anyway. You probably don't. Get um, it. And so like, you don't have to make, you know, you can make good money, money that like lets you live the life that you want to live. And you know, you don't have to w- overwork yourself. You can like spend a lot of time with your family and you still make a lot of money. Like, let's be honest, like yeah, we're doing so all right. You're like, oh, <laughs> so you're like, oh, like my rich, my like, rich neighbor doesn't like my band practices. And I guess it's trying to buy my house. Like F that I own. Exactly. That's yes. That is F that. That is the F that money. So thank you, Star. You're welcome. Yes. I'm all about the metaphors. Yeah. So, so yeah, Josh, that email did drive a lot of our applicant traffic. Blog post was good. But yeah, the founder quest podcast and what's been great about the podcast and you know, basically being who we are just recorded in sessions once a week is a lot of people have had a chance to learn about how we operate at Honey Badger and who we are. That resonates with a certain set of people and those are the people that we want to attract to our job posting. And so they apply and it's, it skips a lot of stuff, right? They're like, oh yeah, I already know about how you do things and yeah. I'm, I'm down with that. So let's talk about the job. So that's been helpful. Yeah, I never thought that would be a benefit of the the podcast, but I think it really has been. Like, I think we're like we're not really putting on much pretense here, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I got called unprofessional by a few people, and uh, and what? Ben had the insight that if if you're like if you don't know by this point that Honey Badger isn't exactly professional, <laughs> I mean, we're it's Honey Badger. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's got to be us. Yeah. We need like a um a flag that um where it's like, well, if somebody uses like SAML login or if somebody um like if we have like a um compliance agreement with some company, they don't get the the like F that money type emails. 
Yeah. They don't get the cool stuff. They get the I thought about cool stuff. I thought about putting some uh, we could put like yeah, like a a rating level on the newsletter, you know, and then have an options where people can like choose their the content they want. And yeah. then I could just like just go wild. <laughs> So it's, it's PG versus mature audience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Before we move on from this, can I just thank the person that said that that newsletter was the, I, and I quote, the greatest marketing email they have ever received. Oh my gosh, really? Yes. What, at least yeah, one person wait a second. said Where this. Is it? Where is it? <laughs> that made me feel, that made me feel good. So. Oh, thank you, whoever that's you so are. so great, Josh. You nice. deserve that. You deserve that. You do really good work. And I'm not being facetious at all. So true. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty great. Oh, uh, what a great thing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So I guess more of that. You just need to like, we need to just unchain Josh. We've been holding him back. Yeah. I'm just going to go full long. on, full on DHH. Just full badger. <laughs> Give him the full badger. Uh, yeah. So I... I think DHH uh, was, was like the original honey badger. <laughs> <laughs> as I was uh, going through the candidates this week and uh, feeling a little overwhelmed by all the screenings that I've been doing, I did have the thought, you know, maybe we didn't time this correctly. Maybe we should have waited until RailsConf and we're having our lounge and we could have the little sign saying, oh, and we're hiring, right? And then because like, that's oh, what yeah. everyone does, right? You, you advertise that you're hiring when you're at a conference. And then like, you know, 30 seconds after I had that, I thought, I had the thought, well, you know, if we had more responses, that probably wouldn't be great for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. And it would probably make it a little bit less fun just having to deal with all that, you know. This yeah. is why they have, this is why companies have HR departments. Like we finally, we've discovered it because yeah. this is, <laughs> because otherwise the founders sit around on, on phone calls 10 phone calls a day. <laughs> I love right. how we just like rediscover all these sort of <laughs> principles. It's like, it's like we start out, we're like, oh, these stupid companies. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> we don't need that. <laughs> it's like over the years, it's just like, oh, okay. Forget that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going back to first principles of running a business here. We're building, yes. building from ground. We're from discovering. Ground. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're in sort of our mid 20s where we're like learning that maybe our parents weren't entirely just stupid. Right. I, I don't know. Got to still, you know, we still have that like rebel attitude because um, we haven't been like, like crushed by our, our 30s yet. Right. It's totally right. <laughs> but even though we haven't had the, I don't know, the 2000 people or so that applied to Basecamp's job recently, I'm quite happy with the number of people that we got because yes, I am talking to most of them and yeah. uh, that would be one heck of a lot of people to talk to. It's really been interesting for me because... I'm finding myself sort of on this other side of the the sort of interview chair table. It's virtual because it's all like online, but more and more. And it's kind of interesting how, I don't know, I guess whenever I interviewed for positions before, like I always kind of just like had this vague idea, like I didn't really know like what I was supposed to emphasize about myself. I just kind of like treated it like, oh, in general, like I am a good programmer. I'll try and demonstrate that to you, but sort of being on this side, it's, it's really interesting how it's like, no, it's like, I've got a pretty good idea. Like the sort of things that like I want to see. And, and like, there's like a very big difference between sort of the people who sort of deliver those in their applications and stuff and the people who don't. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this is just a, like a personal thing too. This isn't, I'm not even saying that like you guys have the same, the same experience, but it's like, it's very obvious to me when like a candidate is like just very impressive and a lot of time that, imp that impressiveness doesn't have anything to do with like resume or sort of past coding skill or whatever it's just sort of the level of like attention that they bring to the actual sort of job application and the take home we you know we're paying people to do like a take home assignment like the level of attention they bring to the take home assignment and it's like are they carefully thinking things out are they like putting themselves in like our shoes and trying to be like, oh, well, what would they want? How can I fit into that role versus like, you know, here's all about me. Here's yeah. all about me. And you can decide whether or not I fit this role. And it's like, it's not like that latter approach is terrible or anything, but it's just, there's a huge difference between them. It's like one is just like, oh, okay. Yes, this is exactly, exactly what uh, we need. I think the thing, the same thing works here as the same as works in uh, like sales and marketing, like in, in marketing, you, it, you don't want to make it about you. You want to make it about them, right? So you're, I yeah. mean, you're really selling 
you're selling yourself and like no one wants to hear all about you. They want to hear about themselves and, and what, how, how much better their lives will be if they, whatever, have the product or have you working for them, et cetera. And like personally, again, this is just personal, but like, like I feel like in interviews, there's a tendency for people to, it's like you ask them a question and they're like, okay, like what's my experience that I have with regard to that? Or if I don't have experience, I'll think of something adjacent to it. And then I'll just kind of like talk about that to sort of prove that I know what I'm talking about. That is okay. But um, the thing that really like a different approach that really works well on me is to, if this person just really sort of like dug in with sort of like questions and be like, well, you know, that's like, maybe they don't actually have experience in a specific like technology, but maybe they're asking me some really good questions, trying to understand the context around the problem. And, you know, maybe parts of that are similar to things that they've done before. And they bring that in just to like, so it's not just completely, you know, there's like there's something to back it up, but it's more, I don't know. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like more demonstrating sort of a command of the sort of like understanding a problem and being able to, to work on solutions to it as opposed to sort of like command of a specific technology. Yeah, it seems like asking good questions has been one thing that has set, set some uh, people apart so far. That's something yeah. I can... I'm just saying this because like personally, I never really, like it came as a surprise to me to notice these things. So yeah, and the, it's interesting to see the level of effort that people put into the initial application. So, you know, back in the olden days before email, right, you had a cover letter, right? That was all nicely formatted and printed out on, on heavyweight paper, right? And then you had your resume also nicely formatted, printed on heavyweight paper, and you put that in the mail, right? And, and these days, right, we still use those terms, cover letter and resume. We, but I think the, the point of the cover letter is to get me to read the resume, right? You, yeah. You, you want, as a, as a candidate, you want to convince that hiring person, like this resume is worth a look because when, like, if you're, you know, base camp and you've got 2000 candidates, like it takes a long time to go through every resume. So, you know, we need a little bit of incentive. Like, why am I even spending more than 30 seconds looking at what you, you sent me? And, oh. and if your cover letter or your, what's now basically the, the email that you send, if that is like, here's my resume. Okay, well, that's like zero effort. Thanks a lot for playing, right? Mm. But if you write something like, I, I found this job because I was listening to your podcast and it's awesome because, you know, X, Y, and Z, like I relate to it in these ways and mm. blah, 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 right? At least give me a paragraph or two of like some context about why you even care. Or a haiku. Why I should care. <laughs> or a haiku. Yeah, so, <laughs> so this time in the job post, I always like to put something kind of weird in a job post. So this time I put, uh, you know, send us maybe some poetry. Like that was an optional thing. It wasn't required. Honey badger uh, theme. But yeah, honey badger theme poetry. And we got two. Two individuals sent us some poetry so far out of the 50. And one was a haiku. And it was, just, and, and to top it off, the haiku included uh, memes, right? <laughs> so, of oh, course, of course, I'm going to talk to that person. Like, no question. We're going to have a chat, even, even if it's just for me to say, you know, thanks for doing that, right? Versus the person like, here's my resume. Let me know. That's yeah. so funny. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's not just like in tech too. Like people don't really, for some reason, people, a lot of people don't know about the cover letter thing. Like, like my wife likes to help people with their resumes. And my wife is a huge, like it's kind of a hobby of hers. And she's like a huge proponent of cover letters. Like she got this job at Tableau and like a ton of people applied for it. it's a very good company to work for and she you know didn't have a ton of like experience like it was, her experience was not super exactly the right experience you would want for that position but um, they told her later that she just nailed the cover letters so well that they they had to talk to her and so yeah so like cover letters super super big and then if you really want to like really sort of impress is tailor your resume to every job a application, right? Mm -hmm. To like, yep. you know, if, if certain stuff in your resume doesn't, isn't applicable to a particular position, just like don't include it or maybe stick it down at the bottom or something. Yeah, that's huge. And, and that happens even more rarely than a good cover letter. <laughs> yeah. And I understand, like I've, I've done the job application process before. It's tough if you're shotgunning your resume to 50 different companies to make a tailored resume to each one. But at the same time, we have had some people say, you know what? I'm not shotgunning my resume. This is the only job that I'm actually applying to right now. I'm happy where I am, but you know, this job posting sounded so cool. I just had to apply. 
right? So, mm-hmm. and that makes a definite difference, right? So of course that resume is like just for us, you know? And uh, yeah, that makes a difference. That's amazing. I feel like we're doing good work. Well, we'll see. I mean, so we sit around this long, right? I've been taking all those in using our applicant tracking system. My, my side project says it's been running for what, like 13 years now. Um, so, years. Which is awesome. So, by the way. It's like, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's been nice. It does what it says Works. on the tin, you know, so yeah. I'm happy. So yeah, all these resumes are coming into there, filtering through them, contacting a good, ch- well, I contact everyone. Like at this point, we're not so overwhelmed with, with people that I can't personally email every one of them. So I do that. And uh, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't, unless you do get to the volume that you just, I don't, know, I don't know, we're not a super big corp, so it's not a problem, right? And I think that's just being polite. Like if someone, if someone takes the time to email you and say, I would like a job, I think it's reasonable to respond to them and say, you know, thank you. Sure. <laughs> we're going to pass, but thank you. So yeah, so I'm contacting everybody. Mm, a good chunk of them, I'm doing an initial phone screen, a Zoom screen with. And basically, uh, Calendly is awesome. I basically just send them, hey, I'd like to have a chat. Thanks, you know, thanks for applying. I'd like to have a chat with you. Please hit my Calendly link and schedule a time with me. And if there's a time that doesn't work for you, please let me know. Because we do have people you know, from all over the world. And sometimes you know, their wake time is not the same as my wake time. And so I'm giving some flexibility. But, but Calendly has been awesome for scheduling. So then we'll have like a 30-minute chat and talk about their questions about the job, about Honey Badger. And we talk about what they're up to. And I, I love these chats, actually. I, I love meeting new people. And I don't love big parties. I'm not like a, I don't drink. So that makes a lot of parties unfun, right? Um, makes all parties I'm boring. Not, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm also not really into the whole cocktail lounge. Let's all get 100 people in a room and everyone's chatting and you can't hear the person that's two feet in front of you. You know, I'm not, not a big fan. But doesn't mean I don't like talking to people. I love talking to people. I love one-on-one conversations. And so this is a good chance for me just to meet a bunch of cool people who happen to be interested in Honey Badger, which is, which is I mean, that's a point in their favor, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun. So we did about, I want to say I've done 10 to 15, somewhere in there so far of these screens. Got to f- have five more scheduled for next week. Oh my gosh. Uh, so yeah, I've been busy. That's what I've been doing like all week long. Because it takes some prep time, you know, each one, I got to review the stuff and mm-hmm. think about the questions I want to ask and things like that. Take some notes afterward. And they've been great. And so the next step, it kind of varies after we do the screening, either we will have all three of us chat with them, like a one hour scheduled meeting where we can dive into more detail about their experience and, and Honey Badger, or we have them take a take home assignment. And this has worked out really well. Like last year when we hired Kevin, we had a, a, an assignment and the thing that's been awesome about that is just having, being able to see how people work. And like, mm-hmm. you know, we, we don't give a whole lot of direction. We do pay for it because we don't believe in asking people to do yeah, unpaid always work. pay people. It's really cool to see the differing interpretations of what we ask for come back. And even the questions that come back, like, I'm not sure if you meant by this. And that gives us some definite insight as to how to be working with that person because we don't do pairing, right? So we don't, yeah. we're not sitting there looking over their shoulder. So they do have to figure some stuff out and uh, even in the, in the, in a regular work day. So this gives us a good chance to see how that's going to be. Yeah. Especially like in and the then, remote environment, one of the big things for me has been how they communicate, especially through documenting what they do- did or their work. That's a huge one. It was interesting. Like last round when we did that, like some people, again, like the cover letter thing, some people just phone it in. They're like, oh, here's the bare minimum that's going to get, get, get the requirements done. And then other people were like, oh, I, I really thought this out and I put some work into this and i mean that shows obviously yeah and uh makes i it like they were saying this honestly because like i feel like it's legitimately something that a lot of people just don't know they haven't been taught it you know they haven't you know they haven't like had parents or whatever then their first jobs were like you gotta write a cover letter and you know so like how would you know that yeah <laughs> if you just sort of been you know if you hadn't been exposed to it so yeah it's good to, to sort of say that like i really like I think we've been fairly sort of transparent and explicit. So I, I like that. I have not personally taken, I didn't, I've, I didn't take the like traditional career software developer path. Like I, you know, I freelanced for 10 years, basically like I haven't even really had a like real software development job. And I was always nervous. Like I was always nervous about the idea of interviewing. Cause I, you know, I didn't have any experience with it, but now being on the other side of, of those interviews, 
And also just knowing some very experienced career developers and listening to them talk, like it sounds like the difference between like kind of a mediocre career and a really great career could be just like learning how to interview and knowing how this process works. And I'm starting to feel better now if I actually did have to go out in an interview, especially now that I've, oh, yeah. I'm, you know, I've got all this business and like marketing experience and I could like apply that to my, myself as someone going and trying to land a job. Like I feel like I would do a lot better than, than I would have uh, given myself credit for, for in the past. Yeah. The M. Night Shyamalan twist to the story is that being that person who's really good at interviewing isn't really about being perfect or like perfectly knowing like all this yeah. stuff. And I mean, okay, we're kind of a different company. We don't like put people on the spot and be like, solve this. Yeah, we this, don't do whiteboard. Um, like the whiteboard is still yeah. like my, that's like my worst nightmare and where I would but probably for totally least, choke. Like, for us, at least, it's much more about just sort of like being able to engage as a peer um, mm -hmm. with somebody and just having a normal conversation with them and not feel like I'm some, you know, giving them a test or anything. That's how interviewing should be. Yeah. Mm, totally. I think we're about, we're at a pretty good length now. Should we wrap it up? Sure. All right. We're wrapping it up. Bye. So this has been Founder Quest. If you're interested in, in any of the things um, about the Indie Lounge or anything that we talked about, just let us know. If you are interested in applying for this job, like who knows, it might still be around by the time you hear this. Probably not, but it might be. I don't know. Check out our careers page. You can go uh, to our website, honeybadger.io, scroll all the way down to the bottom and there's a, a link to that. And if you're interested in writing like Ruby or Elixir blog posts for us, you can have, you can check that out at our blog and there's a link in the header. And then finally, go give us a like review if you want to. I think we said last time that we don't really care. So, but I feel like, you know, it's a podcast. I have to say honey that. Badger, I have to say. Honey Badger cares. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, Honey Badger is immortal at this point. So I'm not sure. <laughs> I th he may be past, it okay. may be past like, Caring or uncaring. Honey Badger just exists. Well, Founder Quest has not reached a mortal state yet. So uh, okay, Founder Quest you could use your, use your love. There you go. Okay, well, I'll talk to you all later. Founder Quest is a weekly podcast by the founders of Honey Badger. Zero instrumentation, 360 degree coverage of errors, outages, and service degradations for your web apps. If you have a web app, you need it. Available at honeybadger.io. Want more from the founders? Go to founderquestpodcast.com. That's one word. You can access our huge back catalog or sign up for our newsletter to get exclusive VIP content. FounderQuest is available on iTunes, Spotify, and other purveyors of fine podcasts. We'll see you next week.